Welcome everybody to the Creative Steel YouTube channel. My name is Josh and today I'm going to walk you guys through how to remove and replace engine mounts on this W204 C63. Let's get to it. Today we're working on our 2010 Mercedes C63 AMG. This video will cover all cars from 2008 to 2015 or the W204 platform. If you're new to our channel, we manufacture aftermarket polyurethane engine mounts as well as various other suspension and drivetrain components. In this video, we're not only going to show you how to remove and replace your engine mounts, but we're also going to compare vibration data between brand new OEM engine mounts and our Alimavibe engine mounts. Now, if you're not installing our Alimavibe engine mounts, that's okay. This video will still be helpful because they both install the same. We currently have Alimavibe engine mounts in this car, so let's go ahead and get those out, and we're going to get these brand new OEM engine mounts in the car so we can get some vibration data. We're now in the car with the OEM engine mounts installed, so let's get some vibration data. Uh, we've got the vibration tester set up. The accelerometer is on the seat base uh, because that's where you generally feel the vibration. It is a three-axis accelerometer, so it's measuring up, down, left, right, in and out. I mean, we're going to average all three of them into one vibration output. And so let's go ahead and show, start the test, and I'll show you guys how sensitive this thing is. Basically, I'm going to be taking the gear selector and just pushing it to the side and letting the springs recenter it, just to show you how sensitive this piece of equipment is. So you can really see that it is, you know, spikes that graph uh, pretty good there. So um, this is about about as soft as I can do it, just pushing it over maybe half an inch. So that shows you how, how sensitive this thing is. And uh, so we're gonna do one last one and then we'll use that as a reference point of where to actually take, um, start our uh, test. So one last one. And then I try to do, run it for 30 seconds or so. That way we get a good amount of data. Um, that, that, that way we just, you know, the, the numbers are accurate when it comes out in the end. So we'll do one last one and then we'll get about 30 seconds of data. to drag this bar over and everything here in the blue is basically where we're um, taking our data from so that's there we're gonna make sure we are averaging and auto scale that'll basically zoom in on the scale um, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit further on this peak here move this over and it looks like uh, we are 39.2 hertz and 3.28 milligies. The hertz being how many times a second, the milligies just the amplitude of the vibration. When we go to put the Alima vibes in, the uh, frequency is going to roughly be the same. Um, all V8s are going to hover around 40 hertz or so, and so we're really looking at the uh, the milligies. So 3.28 milligies is what the OEMs are coming in at at this particular time uh, you know they, it kind of fluctuates a little bit but that's what we're getting for these so let's go ahead and uh, get the Alima vibes installed okay we are back underneath the car and we're gonna show you guys how to get these OEM engine mounts out and get the Alima vibes in so first you need to take off the rock shield uh, it's got eight screws and I take an eight millimeter socket you got two here two here two up in here and two here so let's go ahead and get those off Okay, next we're going to work on getting the exhaust off. We have all of our O2 connections here, so let's go ahead and take those off. You just kind of push on this on this clip and kind of wiggle and pull down. Once they come down, push on these 
black plastic and they kind of come out so wiggle them down push there pull them apart we're gonna do all four of them Okay, now that those are off, make sure that these wires here, there are some clips up on the side of the transmission. So go ahead and take, make sure the wires are free from all of those little clips. Okay, those are good. And there's one clip right up by the uh, where the steering shaft goes into the body of the car. Okay, next we're gonna remove the nuts from the exhaust supports. Um, I like to leave the supports in the car. Um, it kind of helps hold the exhaust from falling down. So what I like to do is I'd like to just take the nuts off got two nuts on each side and kind of just leave those supports uh, in the car and when we uh, take the bolts out of up here by the manifold um, these will come down and then when you have the exhaust in your hand you can just kind of push them out Just like that. Okay, we are working on the back side of the exhaust now, and we're gonna go ahead and take off this uh, support bar. You need a T45 Torx bit. Staying on the back side of the exhaust now, we're gonna go ahead and take off these two uh, exhaust couplers. Um, you need an E12 for these. I like to leave them there, that way it kind of holds the exhaust until you're ready. Okay, we are back on the front side of the exhaust, and there's two bolts on each exhaust flange, and this will finish up removing the exhaust. There's one here, and there's one here. Uh, again, that same uh, E12, and you're probably gonna need an extension. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. And you're not going to be able to see this on camera, but... Alright, so the exhaust is off, and now I'm going to have an assistant help me take the exhaust completely out of the car. Okay, now with the exhaust off the car, we can get to these engine mounts. There's one bolt on top of each engine mount, uh, right above this heat shield right here. So what I like to do is I use my left hand, I'm right-handed, so I use my left hand up in here just to support the wrench on top of the bolt and then I take my right hand and I put it just in the hole that's in front of the steering rack. You'll see a little hole in there and that's what I take my wrench up in, in there and loosen up that way. Um, it's a 16 millimeter wrench. They do make special tools. I haven't found them to be really any faster or better. I just used a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench and it, it works for me. So um, let's go ahead and get this top bolt out. Okay, we've got the bolt out, and now go ahead and take that uh, heat shield out. And they do go a certain way, so go ahead and make sure that you know you keep this on the left side of the car. Let's go ahead and get the other top bolt off. Okay, we're on the passenger side, same thing here. I use my left hand on this side. Um, I go up uh, right in front of the steering rack uh, with the wrench, 16 millimeter again, and take this top bolt off.
Okay, got the bolt off and uh, go ahead and take this uh, heat shield out if you like. One thing to note, be careful the starter is here. We suggest removing the positive battery terminal that we don't have any accidents. So top bolts are out. Okay, we're now going to jack the engine up. Obviously we're gonna put a block in here. What you don't wanna do is jack up on the center of this oil pan. So what we like to do is the very front edge is kind of where we like to jack up on. That way it's supported with the vertical part of the sheet metal pan. It shouldn't give you any troubles there, so. Okay, we've got it jacked up and you want it jacked up just enough where you can get the engine mount out but not too high where you're you know pulling on wires or anything crazy like that so just up enough to, to get the engine mounts out and you know adjust accordingly so okay now we're ready to take out the two bolts on the bottom of each engine mount they're located up in the subframe so you see these little circles here they're up in there um, there and there so using a 13 millimeter go ahead and take off both bolts on each side We're ready to install our Lima Vibe engine mounts and they install in the reverse order as the OEMs came out of the car. You'll notice this engine mount has some wires coming out of it. Basically we have thermistors embedded into the polyurethane. It won't have any effect on the vibration data that we get for today. However, look for that featured in an upcoming video. We recommend reusing the metal heat shields. And when you go to put the exhaust flange bolts in, make sure you to put some uh, anti-seize on them. So let's go ahead and get these in the car and we're going to go ahead and list the torque specs on the screen. So we've got the Alimavibe engine mounts installed in the car, so let's go ahead and get some data. We're going to go ahead and put the car in gear, and here we go. Okay, we're going to call that good, that's uh, about 45 seconds of data. Again, uh, everything in this blue is what we're sampling from display mode is average we're gonna auto scale it you can see there's a couple more peaks here that sometimes can happen we see uh, vibrations occur in some different frequencies every once in a while uh, what we're mostly worried about here is this uh, the highest peak here so let's zoom in on that it looks like we're coming in at 39.1 Hertz and 2.88 milligies um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that is a little lower than OEM. That generally doesn't occur. However, that shows you how close these engine mounts are to factory vibration levels. Uh, that's what we designed them to do. Uh, we wanted something that would vibrate like an OEM engine mount, yet be a lot stronger and have the you know durability and longevity of an aftermarket mount. So there's the skinny of it, guys. So we've got both vibration graphs pulled up here on the screen with the OEM engine mounts up here on the top and the Alimavibe engine mounts down here on the bottom. The OEM engine mounts came in at 39.2 hertz and 3.28 milligies, while the Alimavibe engine mounts came in at 39.1 hertz, 2.88 milligies. Doing the math, this equates to just over a 13% reduction in vibration. However, I'd like to note that that's not typically what we see. We typically see a 10 to 15% increase in vibration over the OEM engine mounts. But that just kind of shows you how close we're getting these polyurethane Alimavibe engine mounts to the OEM engine mount vibration levels. And to give you some perspective on these numbers, 
we've tested some of our competitors engine mounts and some of them are a 50 percent increase in vibration or even more or say if we were to solidly mount the engine in the car with a solid piece of aluminum or a solid aluminum engine mount if you will we are going to see these peak numbers be well north of 10 milligies. So that should give you a little insight on how well the Lima Vibes perform vibration wise compared to OEM. And to note again, this is not platform specific. We have tested many different platforms, Mercedes, Cadillacs, GM, Dodge, Audi, and we're seeing the same things 10 15 percent increase in vibration and like i said some of our competitors have been well north of 50 percent and that's going to wrap up this video we plan to be more active making videos like this one so if there's something you guys would like to see let us know in the comments uh, we have some really cool videos lined up so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one Take 26. Today we're working on our 2010 Mercedes.